Hello, in this video I'll show you how to implement AI Optimizer plugin. So first you need to open plugins, search for it and enable it and you may need to restart the editor after enabling it. And when it's done to be able to see content of this plugin you need to click the options and show plugin content. And then you should have some blueprints and C++, C++ classes there. And this is example project based on third person template. It has play character that can walk around, jump, and also a very simple AI that just moves around randomly. So if I place the guy on the level and I start near him, uh, you can see he just walks around. Uh, he has health variable widget displaying his health, and basically that's it. He also reacts on getting damage. So on left mouse button. I can damage him and when his health goes below zero he's being destroyed and that's that's it so this is AI that we will uh, set up to optimize okay let's start implementing optimizer system so firstly I need to open play character and add here AIO invoker component okay you don't have to modify anything in there uh, one thing I will do is to display debug informations when tab is pressed Okay, and that's all you have to do in player character. Plugin comes with actor spawner. So before setting up optimization uh, settings on our AI, let's set up the spawner so we can simply spawn group of them. Uh, you can find it in content of the plugin. It's called BP AIO spawner. And in general settings, you can set up amount of AI to spawn what class. So I'll change it to our AI guy. Uh, it also supports a respawning. So, and there are two modes. So you can either respawn each AI individually when it dies or only when entire group dies. So for example, if I uh, say respawning after two seconds when each AI dies and I, I will set uh, two AIs to spawn. Okay, and if I kill one of, one of them after two seconds, he should be respawned. And another, another option is to use uh, all at once. And it means that AIs will be respawned only when all of them die. So if I kill one guy, nothing happens. And if I kill a second guy, meaning that entire group died, then after two seconds, two of them should be respawned. Okay, let's increase our uh, number of AIs to spawn. And now, uh, to, to specify where AI is spawned, you can modify the spawning box. So if I increase it, they will be spawned on within this, uh, within this box. Okay, and this happens thanks to generating spawn points randomly, but you can also specify the points manually. And that's that's the option responsible for that. So if I change it to use specified spawn points, and now when you uh, press generate spawn points, it should generate you all kinds of uh, spawn points. A number of them is equal to spawn amount. So every time you change amount, you can quick generate and it should adjust to match a uh, number of AIs and there is also projection mode so for example if I place a cube on the level and I increase it and then when you press project spawn points it should uh, align them with with the cube and they are a little bit uh, above um, because there is also projection uh, Z offset if you set it to zero it will place them right on the cube, but generally it's, it's good to have a little bit offset for uh, AI characters that have some height. So, okay, so I'll leave it like that. And now when I press play, AI should be spawned in specified spawn points. Okay, but I'll change it to random points for now. And you can also remove all points by clicking this button. And the spawner is mainly used for AI characters, but it can be used for any other character as well. I mean, any actor. So for example, if I have this bonfire blueprint here, and I will change Z offset to zero, so it's placed on the ground. If I play, you can see that it spawns bonfires in, in between the box. 
Okay, I'll change it back to AI character. And next section is spawning. But uh, for now, I'll just change it to spawn on when the game starts, and we will get back to it uh, later when AI will be set up. Okay, now we can spawn groups of AI, but they're not optimized at all. So, for example, if I spawn 100 AIs, play the game, you know, you can see that they are all being spawned, but not optimized in any way. Uh, I will also increase the capacity of spawning, so it will allow free eyes to be spawned per frame. Now reduce the interval to point uh, zero 0.01. Okay, and to optimize character, uh, you need to add a subject component to it. And in most simple setup, you don't have to modify anything in there, and then system will handle spawning and despawning uh, this actor based on radius to player. And you can find uh, settings of system in project settings and here in optimizer subsystem. And by default, this spawn radius is set to 3000. In the plugin, you can override it. When it's above zero, it will override the value. So if you say 5000, then this AI will override this, this spawn radius. Well, let's keep it by default right now. And if I play, uh, you can see that when I'm moving away from them, they are being despawned. And when I'm getting closer, they're being spawned again. So that's that's the first step. Okay, and that was very simple setup. Now I will do something a bit more advanced, where I will uh, specify what features of AI I want to disable or, or enable based on reduce to player. Uh, so to do that, you need to disable this option. Uh, this way, the system will no longer be able to automatically spawn or despawn uh, this actor. And instead, we will add optimization layers, and I'll, uh, I'll add three of them with different radiuses. And usually, you will want to have around three radiuses, like for close, medium, and far distance. And now, uh, I will add event optim auto optimization update. And this will be called whenever AI will need optimization, whenever his layer will change. Okay, and it has, it has a few variables. So first one is, is beyond last layer. It means whether AI is above la a radius of last layer. So in this case, it's uh, 3500. So when AI will be above it, uh, this Boolean will give us true. And if it's not, it means that AI is between uh, one of these layers. So if it's a, if it's within it, we can do switch. Okay, and let's say when AI is in layer zero, we can set uh, uh, that he's not hidden in game. So he's visible, and when he's in layer one or two, let's make him hidden. And also, let's set on begin play that actor by default is hidden because there is uh, like there may be few frames delay between begin play and AI getting uh, this event so by default he's hidden and when he will get optimization update if he's in layer 0 then he will be shown and also when actor is beyond last layer then let's despawn him manually so instead of using this option we will do it uh, manually so we can get AI optimizer subsystem. And from it, you can call function dispound subject. It needs the component. Uh, we can decide how he's being uh, dispound, like immediately or using Q. Uh, this is described in documentation, so I'll go, I won't go through everything in here. But uh, in this case, I'll change method immediately. You can also write uh, spawn radius, so when he will be spawn backed. Um, but if you leave it at m as minus one, it will automatically calculate it based on radius of last layer. So in this case, it will be something around uh, 3500. So I'll leave it uh, like that. Okay, and based on that setup, if I play, you can see that AIs uh, around me are only visible and AIs 
as we're getting close to other AIs, they're, they're becoming visible, and AIs behind me, being away from me, are invisible. Of course, in your game, uh, you may want to increase the radiuses because this is just an example. So I set, uh, I set them to be uh, relatively low values. Okay, so now we only optimized visibility of AI character, but we can do much more, like character movement, behavior tree, shadows, collision, and all those things. So let's set it up uh, a little bit differently. AI subject has function that may help you with that. Uh, it's called set character features. So it's only available for characters. Uh, and this is described in documentation, so I, I won't go through everything, but basically you only take what options you want to enable and what options you want to disable. So let's set it up on different settings for different layers. So when AI is in layer 0, we want to have everything enabled. When it's in layer 1, uh, let's disable actor ticking and shadows. And when it's in layer 2, can disable behavior tree, movement component, collision, ticking, and shadows. So character will only be visible playing some animations, but won't do anything more than that. So right now I play the game. You can see that uh, characters that are far from me are not, not doing anything, just standing still. Characters near me are moving around and doing everything. Uh, as I'm getting closer, the settings are being changed. So if I'm getting close to the eyes, they start moving. Okay, no, another option we can use is visibility. I mean, whether AI character is seen or not by the player. So if we enable this option on a subject component, and then is seen a value will return you whether this AI is currently seen by player or not. So based on that, we can do more optimizations. So let's say. Uh, that if AI is in layer 2 and it's not seen by any player, then we can disable everything. And when it's visible, then let's keep it as it was, it's only visible and animation. Again, right now if I play the game, you know, if, I, if I'm looking at them, uh, I mean, if I look at them as a player, you can see that they're here, but if I turn around my camera and change to uh, simulate mode and then they're not here right so so this is another layer of optimization that may gain you a few frames you may encounter a uh, problem with actors being spawned and despawned by this optimizer system uh, for example if uh, let me bring back half widget of AI If I hurt AI and then I walk away from him, so he's being uh, despawned, and then I get back, you can see that his half was restored. The data wasn't saved anywhere. And to save that data, you can use uh, this data class in subject component. I'll simply create new blueprint and I'll call it uh, AIO data AI character okay and this blueprint will only store half value of our character and now to save this data you can use events pretty spawn and post spawn and as you can see the events comes with the data which will be automatically created when the class is specified there so with this you can cast it to AI character and when AI is uh, being disbound then we want to save our hull value in this object so I'll simply get it and set in in the object and when actor is being spawned then you want to uh, read that data and set it to our hull so this time we'll set half of our character and read it from this blueprint and this way uh, now if I hurt the guy and I walk away from him and then when I get back you can see that his half was restored and we can do it with any kind of data 
that needs to be saved. If you would like to modify some data of your IA character through the spawner, then you can either create a child, and you know that, that is related only to your AI character, but in this case I'll do it on on the main entity. So I can add how variable here. And then in function spawn actor, there is a place where you can modify your spawned characters. For example, I can take it cast to my uh, character and set half. And also set max half to values specified in, in spawner. So if I do something like this, then I am able to um, modify AI half through the spawner. So if I say 200 here and I start a game, as you can see, AIs have 200 health. Okay, and that's most of the settings uh, for the system. You can read more in details about it on documentation. Of course, you can apply much more optimization than just what this function provides. For example, if I want to show half widget only when play is close, uh, you can do something like this. Uh, set hidden in word to false when uh, this AI is in uh, layer 0. And in any other case, just hide it. And by default, widget is set to hidden. And it's being shown here. So I'll unconnect this so it's only set to be visible when it enters layer 0. And now when I play, you can see that only AI characters that are close to me have widget enabled. Okay, one more thing. Let's go back to our spawner and set up the uh, start spawning method. So currently we had uh, spawn on game starts. It means that simply when on begging play it will spawn all AIs and then they will be taken care of optimizer sy system but instead we can uh, spawn them on reduce and then you can specify reduce here so for example if it's like this and play spawn somewhere else then this spawner won't do anything unless we enter this uh, reduce and another option is to use uh, region and it means that uh, spawner will start spawning when play enters specified region and you need to provide this region here and it can be basically any actor that overlaps pounds it can be you know box trigger capsule trigger sphere whatever but in plugin content i also prepared simple um, box region that is basically just box with collision settings to overlap only pound because this is type of my play character in this project so for example, if I increase it and then set spawner to use this region, okay, then player will, I mean the AIs will only spawn when play enters it. So when I enter it, they being spawned, and when I leave it, they will get this spawned. And this is because the spawner has this boolean enabled. If I disable it and I enter the region, they will be spawned, but when I, when I leave it, they will still remain and will only be taken care of optimizers. So this is optional. It can be used in some kind of buildings on the, or dungeons. Uh, you can also specify how optimizer system handles spawning and despawning when we enter the region, so you can spawn or despawn them immediately, or using Q. Q is uh, more smooth with immediately option. You can get a little hitch but it depends how many AIs you want to spawn or despawn. So as you can see they are being spawned immediately and despawned also immediately. And basically that's all about the system. So thanks for watching.